even harder question. What are the pros and cons of PyTorch versus TensorFlow? <laughs> I see. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, you, so, can, you, you can go with no comment. <laughs> so a disclaimer to this is that the last time I used TensorFlow was probably like four years ago. And so it was right when it had come out uh, because so I started on like deep learning in 2014 or so and the dom dominant sort of parent, uh, framework for us then uh, for vision was cafe which was out mm -hmm. of berkeley mm -hmm. uh, and we used cafe a lot it was really nice uh, and then tensorflow came in which was basically like python first so cafe was mainly c++ and it had like very loose kind of python binding so python wasn't really the first language you would use you would really use uh, either matlab or c++ to like uh, get stuff done, do, done in like cafe and then python of course became popular a little bit later so TensorFlow was basically around that time. So 2015, 2016 is when I last used it. Uh, it's been a while. And then what did did you use Torch or did you or did you? So then I the moved to Lua Torch, uh, okay. which was the Torch in Lua. And then in 2017, I think basically pretty much to PyTorch completely. Oh, interesting. So you went to Lua. Cool. Yeah. Huh. So you were you're there before it was cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so Lua Torch was really good because. Uh, it actually allowed you to do a lot of different uh, kinds of things. Uh, so which Cafe was very rigid in terms of its structure. Like you, you would create a neural network once and that's it. Whereas if you wanted like very dynamic graphs and so on, it was very hard to do that. And Lua Torch was much more friendly for all of these things. Um, okay, so in terms of PyTorch and TensorFlow, my personal bias is PyTorch just because I've been using it longer and I'm more familiar with it. And also that PyTorch is much easier to debug is what I find uh, because it's imperative in nature compared to like TensorFlow, which is not imperative. But that's telling you a lot that basically the imperative design is sort of uh, a way in which a lot of people are taught programming and that's yeah. what actually makes debugging easier for them. So like I learned programming in C, C++ and so for me, imperative way of programming is more natural. Do you think it's good to have kind of these two communities, this kind of competition? I think PyTorch is kind of uh, more and more becoming dominant in the research community, but TensorFlow is still very popular in the more sort of application machine learning community. So do you think it's good to have that kind of split in code bases? Or um, so like the, the benefit there is the competition challenges the library developers to step up their game. Yeah. Uh, but the downside is there's these code bases uh, that are in different different libraries. Right, so I think the downside is there. I mean, for a lot of research code that's released in one framework and if you're using the other one, it's really hard to like really build on top of it. Uh, but thankfully, the open source community in machine learning is amazing. So yeah, they... whenever like something pops up in TensorFlow, uh, you wait a few days and someone who's like super sharp will actually come and translate that particular yeah. code base into PyTorch and, it w and basically have figured that all those nooks and crannies out. So the open source community is amazing and they really like figure out this uh, gap. Uh, so I think in terms of like having these two frameworks or multiple, I think of course there are different use cases. So there are going to be benefits to using one or the other framework. And like you said, I think competition is just healthy because uh, both of these frameworks keep, or like all of these frameworks really sort of keep learning from each other and keep incorporating different things to just make them better and better.